Hello, welcome to the Friday, May 5th, 2017 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Just a quick wrap up on yesterday's Google OAuth spam. Google released a brief statement stating that they essentially took care of it by disabling the related accounts. The entire episode did last about an hour. That matches pretty much what we have seen, sort of a flash spam attack really that happened there. Now, a Twitter user kind of admitted of actually launching this attack. He claims to be a student and he did it as an experiment for a class and lost control of it. Of course, there is no way at this point to validate this statement. But uh, given that there was no malicious payload and the only thing the attack really did was gather these access tokens that, as we saw yesterday, are easily uh, revoked, I tend to believe this statement that it was really more some kind of experiment that uh, went a little bit beyond the scope of the original planning. Of course, we had this happen in the past, uh, probably most famously one of the first worms. The Morris worm is often being attributed to an research experiment that uh, went a little bit beyond its original bounds. And researchers at New York University came up with a pretty neat attack against some biometric fingerprint sensors. Now, of course, it's long known that uh, these fingerprint sensors aren't foolproof, that uh, depending on the quality of the sensors, it's more or less difficult uh, to actually create an artificial mold of a fingerprint and uh, then use that to authenticate a user. What these researchers did is they essentially played on the fact that the resolution of these sensors is limited. So they're only really able to distinguish a limited number of different fingerprints. And what they tried to do is they collected a reasonably large number of fingerprints and then created essentially a set of master fingerprints that they believe can be used to unlock most phones. So if two fingerprints are rather similar, then essentially they're creating just one fingerprint to represent them both. They ended up with a total of 1200 fingerprints that they believe would be able to unlock 65% of smartphones if they improve their algorithm a little bit. However, just like with all of these molds and artificial fingerprints, it depends still a lot on the quality of the sensor. So if your phone has one of the higher quality, more modern sensors, then it's less likely going to be fooled by this trick than an older phone or a cheaper phone with a lesser quality sensor. Really, what this all comes down to is just like with passwords, complexity and length. Uh, fingerprints aren't random, so there are certain patterns that keep repeating. Just like with passwords, certain patterns repeat. And then the resolution of the sensor essentially corresponds to the length of your password. If you have a high resolution sensor, then it may be able to pick up more details on your fingerprint and it will come up with a larger, longer signature for that fingerprint. And according to Shodan, there are apparently still 1.8 million systems connected to the internet that are exposing RPC bind on port 111. RPC bind is an older but relatively standard Unix service that allows you to look up what port various RPC services are listening on. Something that should never really be exposed to the public internet, just like for a Windows port 135. Now, if you need another reason to disable RPC bind or block it at least on your firewall, that would be port 111. There is now a newer denial of service attack against the service that essentially will allow an attacker to chew up large amounts of memory up to four gigabyte. A patch and an exploit was released for this particular issue. And talking about old protocols, Debian announced that it will shut down its public FTP services. So if you downloaded Debian distributions and related software via FTP in the past, time to change to 
HTTP. Of course, the Debian distribution itself will still support FTP in case you need it for other sites. Well, thanks for listening. This is it for today and talk to you again on Monday. Bye.